Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Do you have a beautiful image like this that is being ruined by an ugly chain link fence? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that chain link fence. Before we begin with the actual work on the image, we need to prep our workspace. Uh, we're going to be using a very specific tool uh, called the Quick Mask tool. It's over here, it's this little square with a circle in it. You may not have the Quick Mask tool in your toolbar. If you don't, you need to add it to the toolbar. To do that, go up to Edit, down to Toolbar. You can see in the lower left hand corner it has Show, and there's a number of things, and the third one from the end is the quick mask tool. Make sure that is active and then it's over here. Once you have the quick mask tool in the toolbar, you have to prep the quick mask tool for use. To do that, double click right on the tool and quick mask options will appear. By default, masked areas will probably be selected. You need to change it to selected areas and you could use the red in opacity of 50% color. That's fine, then click OK. Next prep, you need to get a brush. So hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush. When the brush is active, look over at those color swatches and make sure that they're black and white. You have to paint in black for this technique to work. You can't paint in dark gray, you can't paint in purple, it has to be absolute black. So just to double check, that you definitely have the default black and white swatches over there. Hit the D key on your keyboard, D for default, and you're getting the default colors. Make sure black is the foreground swatch. Just hit the X key on your keyboard to switch between the black and the white. Now, finally, look up at the brush uh, attributes at the top and make sure that opacity and flow are both at 100% and the mode is normal. That's very important too. All that is set the way it should be. Now you're finally ready to begin. What you need to do first is duplicate the background layer. Hit Command or Control J on your computer to do that. Get your Quick Mask tool. Turn it on by clicking on it. Make sure you have a brush tool. So the brush is active, the Quick Mask is active. Adjust the brush size so it's just a little bit thicker than the diameter of the wires of, in this case, the chain link fence. So use the right bracket key to make it larger, left bracket key smaller. Now, this may sound tedious and time consuming, but it's actually not as bad as you may think. What you need to do is paint over all these wires of the chain link fence. There's a couple of little things you could do to make it a little easier, though. So when you start painting, first of all, you'll notice you're, even though you're using a black brush, it's painting in red. That's because we have the quick mask active. So we're actually drawing a mask on here. Now, one thing you could do when you have a straight line to paint across to make it a little faster, you could click on one end, hold the shift key down, go to the opposite end and click there and you'll draw a straight line. So that will make it go a little faster. Now, if you didn't get enough caffeine in the morning and you have a little bit of the jitters or maybe you got too much caffeine, and you accidentally, let's say, are painting and you go, whoops, like that. What you could do to get rid of that is just paint in white. So flip-flop the swatches by hitting the X key on your keyboard, and then you'll just basically erase your mistake. So if you need to fix anything, paint in white, and then when you're ready to go back to masking, paint in black. Now, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me paint all these wires of this chain link fence because I already did it over here. So, once you have all the chain link fence covered with quick mask, you can see there's red over all of it. What you need to do is turn the quick mask off. So go over here and just click on it and turn it off. And when you do that, you'll notice we have marching ants. We have a selection. That's why they call it quick mask. Now, all you need to do is use content aware fill to fill in the, those wires. To do that, on a Mac hit, Shift or hold in Shift and hit the Delete key. I think on a PC you don't have a Delete key, right? You have a Backspace key. So Shift and Backspace. When you do, the dialog box appears. 
change the dropdown to content aware. Color adaptation is checked. Blending mode is normal, 100% opacity. Do not check preserve transparency and click OK. When you do that, it is magically and mystically going to replace all that fence. Now it's not perfect yet. We need to clean it up a little bit. Let's get rid of these marching ants. We need to deselect, hit Command or Control D to deselect those. All right, at first glance, it looks pretty good though, but we have this piece of grass here that's kind of looks bad. And his ear, or I think her ear, I think it's a female, uh, her ear's, ear's messed up. I think over here, the mouth is a little funky looking, maybe the nose a tiny bit. Um, so we need to kind of fix this up. Now we're gonna use three tools to kind of clean up our mess here. We're gonna use the spot healing brush, the healing brush and the clone stamp tool. And it really is kind of hit and miss. Like one may work well for one thing, but it's not gonna work well for something else. So you need to try a different tool. So what you could do, um, start out with usually the spot healing brush. That is the fastest and easiest. So see if that will work. So you could hit the J key on your keyboard and it's going to get you one of these uh, tools. It's gonna to get you either the spot healing brush, the healing brush, or the patch tool, or even the content aware move tool. So we're gonna stay with the spot healing brush. So make sure you're using that. Again, get a, a brush that's a little bigger than whatever it is you're trying to remove. In this case, this piece of grass. And I'm just going to paint on it. And you can see it's getting rid of that. Now, <clears throat> if it doesn't look perfect, but it's still getting rid of the grass, uh, don't worry, we could maybe then use the clone stamp tool to fix what we just kind of messed up a little bit, if that made any sense. So even though it it's doesn't look perfect yet, maybe we could then use the clone stamp tool or another tool to help get rid of it. Oh, yeah, like that, get rid of that. All right, so we got rid of this grass. We could come up here. Oops, kind of messed up the air a little bit. So you could keep trying to paint on it see if you're improving it or messing it up worse. In this case here, it looks like it's messing it up worse. There's something there, maybe there, there. So you come in, see what you could do. All right, now kind of brought that as far as I could bring it. So let's get the clone stamp tool. Uh, the S key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the clone stamp tool. And the way this works is you sample an area by holding in the alter option key you see, get that little bullseye and you're gonna sample an area like right there. And then you could come in and kind of uh, paint over another area. So you're cloning the area you sampled onto the area um, that you're clicking on. So you could come in and try to fix this all up. Like this, so you could see how we this is probably the tedious work, actually, where you may think that drawing is tedious. This is the more tedious work because this is the work that really counts. So you have to come in and make sure that you're that you're doing a good job. Let's get this stuff here. So that let's clean this up here. All right, then we'll let's see the mouth here. We'll click here, come in here. up the mouth area. I don't like this little kind of freckle there. Cover that up a bit. Cover this up a bit. The nose looks a little funky. Fix that. But you could get the idea and I think just that little bit I did, it doesn't actually look too bad. Trying to get rid of this kind of repetitive. So a lot of times when you're using the clone stamp tool, you may get a repetitive pattern and you gotta be um, aware of that and make sure you try to avoid that uh, whenever possible. You wanna avoid those repetitive patterns. Um, and I had it kind of going on with the ear over here. So we wanna make sure we don't get that here. And it actually looks uh, pretty decent. I see little spots here and there that need to be like over in here. I'm not going to sit here and watch, make you watch me do the whole thing, but I think this kind of gives you the idea that it isn't as hard as it may look when you're dealing with a fence like this, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, you got rid of it and it's, it looks decent. 
Um, so you just could work with uh, the image from this point forward using those three tools again. Again, it's the spot healing brush, uh, which I used to begin with, and then the clone stamp tool. And also one I didn't use is just the healing brush. And the healing brush works similarly to the clone stamp tool in that you would first hold in the alter option key to get a sample area. And once you do that, then you could kind of um, add that area somewhere else. So I could click there and you could see I didn't like that, but I got too big of a brush, but that's for the example. Also, remember your brush attributes up here. I had hardness very hard. Ten, you know, technically speaking, I found a lot of times when you're doing stuff like this, you don't want it um, super hard. And you don't want it super soft either. So somewhere in the middle, around 50% uh, with the brush will usually give you good results. Um, but you need to experiment with that as well. So you could come in here and kind of like, fix up this area here. And unlike the clone stamp tool, which just does a pixel for pixel copy, this kind of does a blend when you use the healing brush. It kind of blends the existing pixels, pixels that were on that spot with the pixels you're moving to that spot. So in some instances, this may look more natural than the clone stamp tool. And that's why you may want to use it in some instances over the clone stamp tool. So you just keep going on and try to clean up your, in this case, um, I think it's a Canadian Lynx. This is a Canadian Lynx, and I forgot her name, Sabrina, I think. But anyway, um, that's it. That's how you uh, get rid of ugly chain link fences in front of, this case, a wonderful, beautiful animal. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.